All right, you guys are in for a treat today. Um, this is Seth, by the way. I hope you are having a great day. The recording that we're going to play today was recorded about, uh, I think it was about a year ago, from two really good friends of mine, Amir and Bethany Rostenpour. They are from the Conway campus, and uh, that's where uh, Kendra and I are from. Uh, we got plugged into New Life Church in Conway. That's kind of where everything began for us, and um, Amir and Beth are dear friends of ours, and we recorded an episode of them talking about mental health and uh, a lot of things around that topic as it pertains to ministry and family. So I hope you enjoy this. Here they are. Hey, guys. Hello, everyone listening. Uh, this is, I think this is me and Beth's first time to ever be on a podcast. It is. Wow. <laughs> this is historic. Thank you, Lord, for this opportunity. But yeah, we're Beth and Amir uh, up here getting to s- just serve alongside Seth and Kendra and, and be here. But we are from Conway and Arkansas, Central Arkansas, if you're not from Arkansas. And uh, we've been on staff both about eight years at our church in Conway. Uh, right now we oversee an internship program for college-age men and women. And we get to help with our weekend serve teams. And we love both of those roles just mm-hmm. in really serving our pastors, Hunter and Katie, whatever they need. But yeah, we love the local church. We met in the local church. We yep. met at our church in our college ministry, which is where we met Seth the Kendra. We were all best friends kind of in college and grad school at the same time. Beth, you want to tell me a little bit about our fam? Yeah, so um, we have been married for, we'll be six years this summer. Yes. So we're getting up there. Not We're over the five-year mark, which feels fun. Closer to 10 than five. Or no, <laughs> closer to five. We're going to cut that part. No, we're not cutting. You can't say cut, baby. This is, you got to be natural. You got to be natural. This is awesome. I don't know what No, I'm no, this is, this is part of the podcasting life. They need the real us. This is good. This is I'm good. Kidding. This is the generous. I'm getting it out. It's okay? great. Just, just keep talking. It'll get out. I promise. We're fine. We can't cut any of this. This is good. This is us, our favorite show right now. Okay. So we've been married for six years. Um, we have a puppy named Grease. My He's boy. a long haired hey. dachshund. He has blue eyes. He's so much fun. And we have a two year old son named Dax. Almost three. He'll be three in May. And then we recently um, just had our second baby. His name is Kyler Brave. We unfortunately lost him at 30 weeks gestation. Um, it was one of the hardest things we've ever done. But we saw more of the faithfulness of God through that hard season than any other time in our life. So. Um, we're just really thankful for how he's carried us through. We're going to talk a little bit about that today. We may touch on it at different times, but, um, yeah, that's a little bit about our family. We're excited to jump in. Amir's also, he didn't say this about himself. He likes to leave it out. I like to brag on him. He's also a licensed therapist. So the reason we're talking about mental health is it's a big passion of his just to see people, um, be healthy in this area. We think it affects a lot of different things. So you want to share a little bit about yeah, that? Yeah. Yeah. I'm a... LPC licensed professional counselor. I didn't grow up in church a little bit of my story. So I got my degree. I was about, I was doing full-time counseling and the opportunity came to do full-time ministry. And that's another story for itself. But so I do both. I, I, I work at a clinic on a mo- one morning a week. I call it part, part time. It's like double part time. So, you know, it's not even, so we're just passionate about mental health and the integration. Obviously we can see in our world over the last couple of years, it's an important aspect, mm-hmm. but I really just am really passionate about the integration of that with our faith and how uh, just a lot of how our mental health works and uh, how our, how it's really how God designed our body. Let me say it that way. It's not a shock to the Lord. And uh, even some of the health we find, it, it very much is spiritual, but there's also other ways, just like with any other thing. There's physical ways, mental, emotional ways, relational ways we find health and mental health. So today we just wanted to kind of do a, an encouragement and teaching within the topic of mental health. Um, for young families specifically, when we say young families, we're thinking zero to five. You got uh, babies, infants, toddlers, people, kiddos running around. And I will say to, to start this off, and really any teaching, we need to make this specific to your family. So there's not a cookie cutter way to find health. Uh, obviously, God's word and principles are true, and, and the Spirit of God can apply to anyone. But as you're listening to this, if you're in a young family, and I, I do think we were talking before with Seth, like these principles can apply to anyone, whether you're single and not married, younger, or you're an empty nester. I think these principles apply to you as well. But um, make this specific to you. Some of y'all might have one kid, two kids, three kids. You might have a blended family. You might have, you might be a single parent right now. Uh, but obviously we're, we want to speak to you. And I want to start out with a verse. This is kind of one of my favorite verses that I, I really think talks about mental health. It's 3 John 1, 2. This is Apostle John speaking. This is what he says. He says, Dear friends, I pray that you may enjoy good health and that all may go well with you, even as your soul is getting along well. And what I love about this is a couple of verses like this in the New Testament. 
the author in this case is John. He could have said anything. He could have said, I hope your spirit is getting well. I hope your life is getting well. I hope your body's getting along well. But it's interesting enough, he said your soul, your soul, your mind, your, your will, your emotions. And really he's talking about mental health. So I just love to read this verse, but almost speak this verse over people as like a blessing in their mental health. So let me give like a, a definition set to mental health because I think sometimes people are like, well, what is it? And I and kind of in schooling and, and Google, you know, everyone's second teacher in life. I, mm-hmm. I just have a simple definition to help give people a framework. Mental health can be your biological, psychological, social, and spiritual as believers' well-being. So the quick way people say in a clinical space could be a biopsychosocial and spiritual model. Um, so bio really refers to your physical body, plays a part in your mental health. Uh, the psycho part is your emotions, your behaviors, your experiences. These are, this is just a big picture definition. Social, obviously, is your relationships, the environments you find yourself in, stress, and then your spiritual, obviously, is your relationship with God and, and the things of God. So that's a lot of stuff, Beth, mm-hmm. right? That's a lot of stuff in your mental health. All very important. A lot of factors. And mm-hmm. uh, obviously, as parents, if we're talking about parenting in, in general, our mental health and the health of our mental health is going to affect our children. Mm-hmm. And I, I do want to say today, we're going to talk a lot about mental health. Me and Beth want to give you like kind of five quick tips on how you can self-evaluate how you're doing in these areas. But we're not going to necessarily talk a lot about mental illness today, but we could. I think oftentimes when we hear mental health, we, we quickly think mental illness. And that is one part of it, but there's also can be a, a proactive side of being healthy. Just like if we said physical health or spiritual health, yes, there's some, there's some um, unhealthy sides of that, unhealthy habits, opportunities, things that we can do. But there's also some proactive, healthy things we can do in our mm-hmm. spiritual health, physical health. And I think that's what feeds some of the sig- stigma, Seth. You know what I mean? When, when we hear mental health, sadly, probably due to a lack of education in, in, in our world and what we know, we just think of anxiety, depression. We think really clinical. That's very much part of it. But there's also parts of just being healthy. Mm-hmm. So you've you've said something. Uh, I, I, I have it in here, but I didn't say it. Yeah, I, this. I thought you were gonna say it like immediately, but I, I may be jumping ahead, so I apologize in advance. But no, no, I, I passed it because I didn't know if it would fit. But you go ahead. Yes, uh, when you were teaching, I don't remember where we were, but you were teaching a group, and you said, "What do you think about when you hear?" And then you said, "Like physical." I health. said physical health, and then you went down a list. And would you would you just say that? It, yeah, yeah. Really so good. we were. I remember we were at your house, and we were teaching um, some leaders in your home, you and Kendra's home when you live in central Arkansas still. And I I asked this question, I actually did this recently with a group and they did much better, but usually I just say, hey, when you think this is, I got two questions for you, not trick questions. When you think of physical health, what are some things that come to mind? And I'm like, don't overthink it, first thing that comes to mind. So people often say, exercise, diet, working out. Seth, what would you say that comes to your mind when I say physical health? Uh, Bacon. Bacon, amen, (laughs) food. You know, there's parts of it. And, And some people might say, diabetes or something like that but usually it's like you know positive. just positive things or just you know general things we would think of and then i say I, the second question i ask is hey when you think of mental health what do you think of and often say 10 answers are said most of them have to do with mental illness so people will say anxiety depression suicide mm-hmm. um personality disorder stuff like that yeah that's what else uh stress and then i and then what i say is i ask a simple question follow by say hey why well, i want to ask for what comes to mind with physical things, they're positive things or neutral things. But when I ask, hey, what comes to mind when you think mental health, they're, they are illness mm-hmm. or, or unhealthy things or maybe some negative things or stigma things. And people kind of get shocked. I was like, hey, I wasn't trying to trick you, but that just kind of speaks to some of the stigma. Yes, mental illness is a part of mental health, just like physical illness. We could talk about cancer. We could talk about you know any kind of unhealth physically, but there's also this positive side uh, there's a whole field called positive psychology, and it's about how you take care of yourself and health. And so I just I always challenge people of even just kind of their frame of thought of yes, these things that people go through that are very real, uh, especially the high, such a high prevalence of anxiety and depression in our world, especially in America. That's real. Mm-hmm. But there's also ways to take care of ourselves. Some some of mental health is is great things. It's it's things that you do to refresh you. It's relationships. It's friends. You know. So yep. that's what I usually ask at the. That's great. I going. wasn't sure if you were going to mention it. So no, you. yeah, I didn't know if you wanted to put the Lord. The Lord made it happen. So we're going to give five quick tips. Uh, we'll talk with Seth throughout. The first thing I would say, and this, again, is just how to be healthy in our mental health. I, the first thing I would say is just how to manage. you got to manage your stress. And a lot of these, you're not going to be like, wow, Amir, you're the smartest <laughs> dude I've ever heard in my life. But some of these, you know, I want to be a test for you to say, hey, how am I doing these areas? I think these five things you can look at any time and say that. So when we talk about stress, we all experience stress. Some of stress is circumstantial. 
I'll give you a fun example. We are potty training our son. <laughs> on day two, Beth had a doctor's appointment. I kept our son. Day two of potty training, my son pooped on the floor. He wasn't wearing <laughs> underwear. And I felt stressed. And I'm not being funny. I, it, it triggered my anxiety, and I felt so stressed. And then the dog's coming over and sm- sniffing it, and I'm like, rah. That is very circumstantial stress. The best part was it hadn't happened to me yet. I leave. Yeah. Does it Beth time. leaves, guys. And I was like, she's like, how's it going? I was like, well, he dumped on the floor, and the dog's coming over <laughs> sniffing it, and I'm trying to clean him, and he's crying. It was really hard. How many of y'all know I was stressed? <laughs> okay, I'm stressed thinking about it right now. I'm like getting overstimulated. Okay, that's circumstantial, but then some of y'all might have a, maybe a more consistent stressor in your life, like let's say a tough work environment, where sadly, even if you enjoy your job, maybe it's a more of a name, demanding side, or maybe you're part of your job, you have a hard boss or hard coworkers. It's stressful. So every time you go to work, you, and for a lot of y'all, y'all are probably hearing this right now, on your way to work, you start to feel stressed. Mm-hmm. Well, that's not going anywhere. So we have, there's a part we play in managing that stress. I, I, always, I always tell people like, man, we have so much... I think we focus so much on what well, some people say you got to have a stress free life. That's impossible. And God made your body to respond to stress. Mm-hmm. Like that's part of how we were wired and created by God. So I don't know if it's always so much, hey, we need to remove all stress from our life. Although if some of the stress in your life is from your poor decisions, that's right. a whole nother oh, conversation yeah. oh, set, yeah. you know, <laughs> but it's more if you have a hard work environment, but you feel like you're supposed to be there or financially is what you got to do. Hey, we got to figure out ways to manage your stress. So stress is your body's reaction to a simple kind of idea definition of an event, a circumstance re- that re- might require a change, a response, and an adjustment. But this is what I love to teach people. Stress, uh, the level you sh- of stress you experience, Seth, is really conditional on you as a person. Mm. Meaning two people can be in the exact same stressful situation and react differently. I'll give you an example. You might be running late to something. Let's say you and Kendra, and I think y'all are probably different in this. Oh, and, yes. And one of y'all can ca- kind of be freaking out because you're like, I hate being late. I don't want to be running that late. That would be me. And you, and you. But then the other one's <laughs> running late and be like, okay, I don't want to be late, but it's fine. It's no big deal. Same stressor of, hey, we're about to be like, say you're meeting with someone important, uh, a family member's in town or someone in y'all's church that you're excited to meet about. And you're like, Kendra, we got to go. And, and Kendra's doing her best. You're going to start to feel stress. Kendra feels stress, but it's probably pretty low. Yours is up there. Same stressor, two people. You see how you experience it different. So when I say manage stress, I'm meaning some of it's knowing how you're wired. Oh, yeah. Some of it's knowing um, how to cope and learning ways to do that. We do have a part to play in that. So one application I give you, and Seth, we've talked about this before, and um, this kind of strategy, if you will, I read in a psychology textbook. I was teaching Gen Psych class, and I just loved it. But the the author said it's an emotion-focused stress relief. What does that mean, stress management? It's meaning it's not so much doing something that takes away the stressor. It's more just regulating your body and helping you de-stress, generally speaking. So, for example, say, let's go with that work example. You had a long day at work and you come home and you still feel some stress or the stress has led to some, some fatigue, what could you do in that evening? I know family dynamics different, all that, but that would help you de-stress or it's the weekend and you're not working. So these are things like doing things that you love that refresh you. It's time with certain people. Maybe it's time with your family, friends that refresh you. This is where spiritual discipline is one of those benefits of mental health. It's time with the Lord. Even if it's 10 minutes, you're turning on a worship song, you're getting in the presence of God, you're, you're, you're casting your cares on the Lord. One of my favorite scriptures, Psalm 55, 22, that was my COVID scripture. Cast your cares on the Lord and he will sustain you. He'll never let the righteous be shaken. Wow. That even like sounds like it's battling anxiety at then. He'll never let the righteous be shaken. Uh, and it's like getting the presence of God. It could be breathing exercises. It could be things that are restful. And one thing I like to challenge people to think about, Seth, is just exercise. And I wish I had the time to talk about it. You could Google right now mental health uh, practices or mental health benefits for exercise. And the research is just nuts how just moving your body helps your body naturally de-stress, helps your body cope. And I'm not talking going and buying a gym membership at somewhere. You could do that. I'm talking even the simplicity. Me and Beth as a family try to go on a walk multiple times a week. We do that because we want to be healthy. We do that because it's fun with our son, but we also do that for our mental health. Mm-hmm. Well, you might think, well, I'd go on a walk for my physical health. Yeah, it's for our physical health, but it helps clear our mind and stuff like that. And so if you're a parent right now listening or anyone listening and you don't move your body at all, I would challenge you, hey, what would it look like one or two days a week just to move a little, make That's it a really family good. activity? Yeah. If you do, I would say, hey, what would it look like to be a little more consistent? We're recording this in the beginning 
the springtime, but three to four days a week, because so much is going to start to happen in your brain, in the chemical side of your body, and your God made your body naturally to release endorphins and these neurotransmitters that help you de-stress, that help you feel better, just because you moved your body, wow. and it's going to help you be healthier in your mental health. Now, a lot of times when people say that, they're like, I mean, I can't afford this, or I don't have time for this. Hey, man, we all have time for a 10-minute walk. You know, like, I, and some of us, if, if you're struggling in your mental health, these are one of these things that research shows sleep, <laughs> the big three, sleep, exercise, and eating have these huge implications on your mental emotional health. I'm not saying if you're someone who struggles with anxiety that it'll just magically go away, but the research will show you there's always an implication if one of those threes are unhealthy, if you can get them in a healthier spot, it's going to help you. So if you're a parent in here or anyone, hey, let's, let's, let's practically learn how to manage our stress or how we're doing with managing our stress because you do play some part in that, whether you believe it or not. Yeah, so that was number one. You know, we got to manage our stress kind of first tip uh, within having healthier mental health. And Beth's going to do number two. So Beth, hit him with it. Yes, so point number two is prioritize time together. And I asked Amir if I could take this point because I want to brag on him because he leads our family so well in this area. Um, and with what I have learned, the longer we've been married, the reality is we all want to spend time with our spouse, right? Most of the time. Wouldn't you say that with you and Kendra? Absolutely. Okay. <laughs> hey, got it right. Unless it's got been it right. a rough week. <laughs> <laughs> there, there's the occasional moments where you need some space, but the majority, I Beth's feel like. Beth's trying to trick me. <laughs> this is all set up. She's supposed to set you up for success. No, no, no. <laughs> so the, uh, the reality is we all want to spend time together, but in this season of having young kids, I cannot tell you ever, I could probably count on my one hand how many times we've just ended up with free time together like sure. it doesn't happen there's not moments where it's like wow all of a sudden you know Dex is busy and we can just hang out and have a deep conversation <laughs> that doesn't happen we have to plan for it and protect it so Amir has done a great job of recognizing our need to plan this time in our calendar so if you're taking notes kind of an application with this is really simple is just to plan and protect date nights so just as an example, I'm going to give you guys some insight into the rhythm that works for our family. So we do right now have a weekly date night, but when you hear that, don't freak out. That doesn't mean that once a week we get dressed up and pay for a babysitter and go out and do all the bells and whistles. That is definitely not our reality. Um, but we do once a week have a night that we protect. We don't let anything in the calendar come into that. And the majority of the time, what it looks like is I get a break from cooking and all the mamas said, amen, it's the wow. best. <laughs> and so I don't have to plan <laughs> a meal that night. Um, we get something out and our son, he goes to bed early right now. He's asleep usually by seven thirty, sometimes eight. And then we usually go to bed at 10. So we have from eight to 10 to eat dinner. We put our phones away. We just try to have intentional conversation. We're usually in comfy clothes. Amen. It's not anything fancy, but I can't tell you guys, I look forward to this night every week. It like fills my heart. What we don't do on this night is talk about bills or planning. Like we try to avoid the conversation that feels draining or like work to us, any sort of decision making. We just enjoy each other. And it has been a game changer for us. There was a season where we weren't very good at it. And when we made this shift, it like brought life back to our marriage and just our mental health. Like it really did help so much in that area. And then monthly, we do do a more typical date night um, where we try to get a sitter half time. Sometimes we do this with friends. Sometimes it's just us. And then this one may challenge some people, but yearly, this may not be for everyone. And it really kind of depends on how old your kids are, how difficult or easy this is. But we once a year try to have some time where we get away together, just Amir and I, we get grandparents to hang out with Dax. And sometimes it's 24 hours, sometimes it's two nights, but we just, that time, although it's a lot of work, I'm always in the beginning phase, like setting up decks, making sure he has meals prepped, getting our bags packed, all the stuff. I'm like, man, this is so much work. Is it going to be worth it? But when we get there, it's always so worth it. Like it just does something for us and mentally. Even that's what this weekend turned into kind of spontaneously. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's been really good for us. Question for that. So who, like for, this is for maybe uh, the person who's listening, who thinks it is absolutely impossible to plan <laughs> that far ahead um, or even to, to have a calendar slot that says date night and it's consistent. Yeah. What would be your encouragement as far as just taking like one step uh, for a couple that's listening to this? Yeah, I would just say, I think sometimes the reason it feels so impossible and hard to get there is because you kind of feel selfish a little bit. Like you feel like maybe the needs of your calendar take priority, but what made a shift for me is realizing when Amir and I are healthy and our marriage is healthy, our family, it's better for Dax. It's better for 
ministry. It's better in every sense. So wh- when I kind of grasped that, I was like, okay, we could, we're going to make the sacrifice here. And sometimes it does look like saying no to things that we would like to be at. Um, or I don't know if you have any examples. No, and I, again, I think this is where it comes back to every family dynamics different. Yeah. But some of it might be, hey, let's just call it, Let's just have some real talk. Some of y'all, hey, we don't need to be checking emails and uh, work stuff in the evening. And I'm not, I'm not speaking to the percentage of y'all that has a very demanding job, but some of y'all know, some of y'all have a working bend. So the kids are down finally, and you and your spouse are chilling, and you can go check emails. Or let's be real, a lot of us, it's easy just to get into scroll mode. We get on our phones, and we scroll, and we scroll, and we scroll. And so me and Beth are like, hey, well, if we were able to do that, I pick up food on the way home from the gym, kind of in the natural flow of our week. I promise you, you can, you can carve out a couple hours. Mm-hmm. So if, it, if it's more making it happen, I think once you do it and you enjoy it, it's that but if you're like Amir we have three kids and we have practice and stuff like that well sure now it's so specific to your dynamic but then again still how can we work around the schedule to prioritize our marriage because what you see often is we have kids or multiple kids and they take the priority and then the your spouse gets your leftovers if they get that after work and all that and is that the healthiest and again we're talking about mental health so if you can have some adult conversation Mm -hmm. a lot of times I joke and say Bethany's my life coach so on Wednesday nights we've kind of found a day that works for us I'm just processing my life and kind of start crying and then Beth's like patting (laughs) my back and coaching me (laughs) what that's really we can take a sneak peek you know so I think it's like there's you know the desire is there to spend time with your spouse can we make a party can we carve some things can we put some things aside and if planning is this you'd be surprised yeah, sometimes it was, it was for us where one week, Seth, it was one day, and then next week was the other day. But even as you start to flex that muscle looking ahead, mm-hmm. you'd be surprised then when Beth's planning groceries, because now it's a natural rhythm. Beth will look Friday or Saturday for the next week grocery order, and she literally says, if it wasn't already set, this night's date night, and then it's already protected, you know? Mm-hmm. And then if we have some ministry come up, we literally will look at our schedule, and either if it was already recurring, but then we say, oh, hey, we already have three things this week, then we have to grab Thursday as date night. So we're just even thinking, this mm-hmm. is a... This is a rhythm for the Rose and Poor family, period. Mm. And it didn't start like that, but it became like that. So then if we have a lot of stuff, we have to grab one day. You know, So I think that's what I would say to that person. Sure. Hey, let's yeah. start, but what, what would be holding us back? If mm-hmm. it's work and other stuff, well, hey, what's the most important thing? But if it's also like, we don't know if we don't, just start. And you'd be surprised right. how you desire it more Once and more. Once you start prioritizing that, it's really easy to value it and make the sacrifice to get there. I think once you get in the rhythm of it, it's clear to see how helpful it is. That was some good stuff. Thank you guys for sharing. We will pick up right where we left off in part two of this recording.